Praise the Lord. Today is delicious. Yeah, you know, delicious. Tastes good. Looks good. By golly, you know, when I uh, taste something that's good, <laughs> like Pepsi, I can only think delicious, yummy, yummy for my tummy. And you know, I don't know about you, but I kind of think of God that way. Oh, sure, I could, you know, pick out and choose what portions of the Bible I want to read. You know, like, get stuck in the Old Testament, in the prophets, and then come across as some kind of, like, condemnation, you know, and, oh, there's only sin. God, we got to warn them to begin again, you know, over and over again. Let's warn them of sin and tell them to begin again. That's not very delicious. Matter of fact, that's kind of like, hmm, bitter waters to me. Because, you see, warning someone once, I could understand. And maybe warning them twice, I could get the handle on. But once I already know the warning, I begin to wonder if it's a magpie, you know, and sometimes I wonder what people are reading because the only thing coming out of their mouth seems to be warning, warning, you know, kind of like that robot. Warning, 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 warning. And that's all they seem to do, warn people. They don't have anything giving or living to say. Nothing that brings life. You know, one of the things that I've always kind of admired about my relationship with God is that not only does he give me a warning, but he always gives me a blessing. Yeah, you know, every time he warns me, he says, well, if you do these things, not because you did them, but if you do these things, or if you continue on in that way, or if you choose to go a certain direction, this is what's going to happen. So he gives me a warning, but he also gives me a blessing. But if you choose not to do that, this is what will happen. He's always giving me a direction that I should go, if I want to go, and if I choose to go. He gives me the freedom to decide for myself which way I want to go. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, I kind of like Pepsi. So, if I go into the store and I buy Coke and I want a Pepsi, it just isn't the same thing. You know, when I drink a Coke, it's like, ooh, that's strong, you know, because it lasts long. No, I'm kidding. But, you know, a Coke doesn't taste like a Pepsi, and a Pepsi doesn't taste like a Coke. Now, they are both soda drinks. And in Christianity, you know, you can go to some place that you might like to visit once in a while, and I might try a Coke or drink a 7-Up every now and then, and maybe even a Mountain Dew. Woohoo! <laughs> but the reality of all those soft drinks, there's some that I prefer, that I choose to enjoy because I've tasted and seen that it's delicious for me. And Pepsi's it. And you know, I kind of look at my devotional time the same way. I like to spend time with God in the morning because God sets me off in the right direction by giving me the option to choose how I respond to the day. I can choose to go my own way, and God won't say much about it. He'll say, the fool, you know, and his folly, you know, fall into the pit, and that, you know, you may be digging, you know, your own hole that you may trip yourself up in because you haven't really paid attention to the direction that I've given you, that I could lead you away from that destruction that seems to be coming, or you could, you know, go the way that I said, you know, and here's the new highway, you know, that's been prepared so you don't have to go into the sinkhole. And you can avoid all the pitfalls <coughs> that there are in life by going the easy way. You know, narrow, sure, maybe, but guess what? Once you're on it, it's like a highway to heaven. You know, kind of not broad and wide, and maybe it is a little narrow, but it goes straight to the source, right from the heart to my heart, God. And I like that, you know, because then God gives me, just like a GPS, you know, like a, a road map, you know, God tells me how to get there. 
the shortest distance possible, the easiest way. So I like to taste and see that the Lord is good because I find that when I spend time with my God, He's always got something good to say. He gives me the warning. He gives me the blessing. He even gives me instructions in how to get where I want to go. So really, the reason why I spend time with God is pretty selfish. I'm kind of like, you know, self-centered in one way. I like to do things the easy way. You know, kick back, relax, take it easy. That's kind of why I'm into grace, you know. I mean, I see those people, don't get me wrong, you know, they're probably saved, you know, out there struggling and, you know, fighting and arguing and debating and, you know, telling people what they got to do and they make themselves out to do this and do that and do the other thing and they're always doo-dooing everywhere that they go, you know, and it kind of smells funny too, wherever they've been, because kind of doesn't smell like the love that I got saved from. Now, don't get me wrong, the Bible does give you kind of like an option. You know, you can serve the Lord for love or you can serve Him for fear. And if you fear the Lord, maybe you're into legalism. Maybe you're into dogmas and doctrines and denominationalisms. Maybe you're like in the checkbook of life, you know, when God sends your report card, maybe you're doing the deeds, you know, the denominations, the dogmas, you know, the doctrines, you know, the decisions, you know, the the D's of life, you know. You could get into the C's, you know, the B's or the A's, you know, and for me, I'm kind of like, I just let God do what He's doing, and I want to kind of like respond to what He tells me to do, because so far, God seems to do just what I like. Now, I'll admit, there are times that I had to give up my Pepsi for a while, and I had to check around and find it on sale. Matter of fact, this is on sale two for three dollars. That's pretty good. This is the 1.5 liter. My wife and I go way out of our way looking for these sales that God brings us to so that we can enjoy the things we enjoy. And you know, God blesses us in that because then we use what He's given us for His glory. And we thank God every day for, God knows, you know, having Pepsi and I know some of you may be into, you know, orange juice. Praise the Lord, you know, <laughs> go for it. But orange juice kind of eats me up inside a little bit. You know, so I, I kind of stick with what works for me. Now, you know, you may be one of those people that enjoys health, you know, and you've got all the pieces working together. But being disabled, you know, for the longest time I barely lived on Pepsi and Fritos and that kept me alive. Because God used that, for whatever reason, miraculously to minister to my body. And you know, God uses a variety of things in life to minister to us. And one of the things I like is that God gave me devotionals. You know, He gives me those books that I choose to use to discover and uncover His will for my life. Yeah, you know, kind of like, uh, oh, I don't know, things like my utmost for its highest. Tozer, renewed day by day. Living Water, Chuck Smith. You know, those kind of books. Now, I do have a whole bunch more books. I have things like, oh, I don't know, from my heritage days, I have To Be a Jew, you know, my little prayer books, my Sidors, you know, my... I think I have my Spanish Bible. Oh, that's not a Spanish Bible. My Spanish Bible is somewhere around here. So I got some Bibles, you know, and I've got some books over here, you know, that are like, you know, the Jewish and the Messianic and the Spanish, you know, and the basic youth conflicts. You know, and I have all kinds of things that God has inspired me over the years with, you know, to study, to show myself approved, to work with and need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And, you know, I've enjoyed those over the years. They were pretty important to me at the time and I enjoyed what they were teaching me and as I learned them some of them I continue to use and some of them I just kind of put in my library pass some of them on to people that were reading those kind of things and some of them I just said eh 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 you know and 
I enjoy my perspective. You know, the direction that God has given me every day that I choose to pray and to seek His face. To take a moment to listen to what God says. To read His Word, but mostly anymore. To listen. I found in life more people don't listen than do listen. More people will do something than be still. More people will run off doing their own thing than doing God's will. I don't know. doing God's thing. I kind of like doing His will. I kind of like taste what they're getting into and I kind of go, ew, too salty. And you know, maybe have to like cut down their recipe. I taste some of their efforts and actions and I go, ooh, bitter. Ugh. Kind of not what I really like, you know. Not good for me. But you know, whenever I find Pepsi on sale, because God knows me, because God chose me, because God loves me, I get excited. Because uh, God always had something good for me. And it may not always be immediately seen, but like sometimes God takes me through some trials and tribulations, you know, kind of those struggles, you know, that you go through when you're kind of like cleaning up your act, you know, like, I'll admit, when I shave, I don't like it. And I probably got to go shave today or maybe real soon, but when I shave, my face gets burned. You know, it hurts. No matter what razors I use, it just bugs me. I don't like spending all that time on myself and then using, you know, the tools that are needed to you know, clean up my face. And sometimes I don't like what God's doing inside me because it hurts. Cuts out some, you know, big thing that I really cling to, you know. Took away Pepsi one time, you know, for years, you know. And it's kind of like, man, what a bummer. But I kind of enjoyed it for a while. And then when I got a chance to go back to it and God said, it's okay, I went, cool. And I liked it. I liked being able to have the freedom to choose to obey or disobey what God was doing for me. And you know, that's what we have every day. That choice to obey or disobey what God would say to you today. Because God's going to give you a choice today. God's going to give you a perspective today. God's going to take where you're at, what you're in, and decide for you where to begin to develop a personal relationship that he might be able to speak to you all through your day if you want to. Because you see, not everyone likes Pepsi. Not everyone likes hearing from God. Don't know why. Not everyone loves being talked to from the love of God, but they go with the fear of God and sometimes they want to be talked to from a distance, you know, like from their pastor or from their elder or deacon or some other way that God speaks to them. And that's okay. Because you see, God is reaching out today as long as it's called today. And if you hear His voice, harden not your heart, that He wants to reach out to you in some way to talk to you or to reach you so that He can comfort you. Because the days are evil. That's obvious. And the end of the world has come. That's pretty much well determined by everyone, even non-Christians. But what God wants to do is to show you the way that He has for you today. And He'll speak to you wherever you want to meet Him. Because He gives you a lot of options in this last generation to reach out and to know God in a personal, intimate way. To relate to God in a personal intimacy that only Jesus could bring to you because He had such a personal, dynamic relationship with God our Father. 
And that's what he wants you to know in his perspective. He wants you to realize, I sent you my son so that you could know me. My son revealed me. If you have seen my son, you have seen me. And so God our Father, God Almighty, the Creator of the universe, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our salvation, speaks to you today. Imagine that. He reaches out to you in one of the most simplest and humblest ways that He knows how. And that's just simply say, today, you hear His voice. So be still sometime today. Try to find your way of hearing from God, whether it be through a devotional, through your Bible study. You know, you're flipping through the Bible, you know, you got your Genesis, Exodus, you know, through Revelation. You know, you read your daily, whatever. You know, whatever fits and works for you, then do it. Just do it. That's all. Just do it. And then when He's giving you the choice, remember this. God is not and your definition of God and your realization of the Father is not condemnation, but He wants to confirm you your reservation in heaven that He's made for you, that you need only to confirm your reservations with Him, that He has decided that He wants you to come to heaven to be with Him forever. But you have to come to Him on His terms and not your own. You have to accept His salvation and not create your own way of coming to a realization because his salvation was provided for you freely your realization comes to you through work and condemnation and convictions and kind of all kinds of things that you have to work at to come to that conclusion it's not that hard all you need to do is ask him simply come to the counter so to speak and ask for your reservation hey God I heard that you have my salvation on tap You've taken care of it for me. You have said that I could be saved. What must I do to be saved, God? And ask Him. He may say that you need to, you know, have a luggage check, you know, to check your luggage to see what you got in there. If you're carrying bombs and guns and knives, just like at the airport, you can't take them with you. So you may have to get rid of your sins, you know, and a lot of things that you kind of like really are corrupt about, you know, because you really don't want to put them on a checklist for heaven, but as he tells you to get rid of those things, he kind of gives you other things instead. You know, here, let me take your gun away so that I can give you the Spirit of God instead. Let me take your bombs away so that I can give you the Word of God instead. Let me take some of these other things out of your life so that I can give you something instead to put into your life. Let me take away your anger, your bitterness, your wrath, your malice, you know, your backbiting, your fighting, your your sinfulness and your sinful nature and give you peace, love, and joy, contentment, kindness, gentleness, meekness, temperance. And let me give you my son that you might fellowship and talk to him daily. Man, sounds like a good deal to me. Now maybe you don't want that. Maybe you don't have that. Maybe you don't want to ever be like that. Well, go to hell. No, really. Go to hell. Once you've been there, although once you've been there, you can't get out. But if you could go to hell, which nobody has and nobody will, but, I mean, they will once they have no other way to get out. But once you've been to hell, you realize it's too late. You had the opportunity to kind of like not check in at the highway to hell. But rather, you could have checked out what God had to say about heaven. So it's really up to you. My perspective is, I'm kind of lazy. I kind of see the end of the world and smile. I kind of see things falling apart and go, yep, that's what's going to happen. I see people kind of working, trying to, you know, save the nation or save, you know, whatever. And I go, nope won't happen. It's the end of the world. It's going to happen. And I kind of listen to what Jesus says to me. He says, don't waste your time on the things of the world, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things, my peace, my love, my joy, my contentment, my kindness, 
they'll all be yours until the day I take you home. And that you'll just continue to shine brightly in the midst of a dark and perverse generation. I like that. Because you see, wherever I go and all that I do, I just give it to God. He sees me through. And one thing I found about God, when I taste and see that the Lord is good, I only got one word to say about that. Only one thing I've discovered about God like that. Delicious. How about you?